semicolons might seem scary. But for the digital SAT, you only need to memorize two simple rules. Number one, semicolons act like periods. If you can use a semicolon, you can use a period. Actually, semicolons are a stylistic choice, so you can't just switch them out with periods willy-nilly. While that may be true in your own writing, on the digital SAT, we simply do not care. You will never have to make a stylistic choice on the digital SAT. On this question, for example, we see that a period and a semicolon are both options, which is cool because they do the same thing and there's no other difference in the answers. So we know that we can eliminate both of them because you can't have two right answers. And real quick, see if you can figure out what the right answer is. Go ahead and pause the video. All right, the correct answer was E. Basically, everything before the word they is a big old introductory phrase. And we know this because they is the subject of the sentence. And anytime you have a subject coming after a comma, way later than the beginning of the sentence, most of the time, that's going to be an introductory phrase. And then, of course, if we need a period like we do on this question, and you see that a period's not available, but a semicolon is, you're going to know that that's your answer. And just to clarify here, we have the island of Madagascar off the coast of Africa. So we can get rid of this to kind of simplify. The island of Madagascar is the habitat of more than 200,000 species of plants and animals, period. Many are not found anywhere else on the planet, period. So two full sentences, we want a period or a semicolon. And rule number two, it's not quite as simple, but once you know what to look for, it's pretty easy to spot. To understand the second rule, it's important that you first understand the comma rule that it stems from. And you probably do because this is the most common comma rule. We use commas to separate items in a list. We can see that here pretty clearly. I need to buy three things at the store. Our first item is apples, so we get a comma. Second item is bananas, comma, and oranges. Pretty simple. But what if the sentence looked like this? I need to buy three things at the store. Apples, which are my favorite fruit, bananas, which are a great source of potassium, and oranges, which are packed with vitamin C. So here, we're using commas, because that's the rule, right? And this is acceptable, but I think you would agree that it looks kind of wild, because we have so many commas, it's hard to keep track of what's going on. So in this case, we can employ the second semicolon rule, which is you are allowed to use semicolons to separate items in a list if those items contain their own internal punctuation. So what do I mean by internal punctuation? Every item in this list has a comma already. So our first item is apples, comma, which are my favorite fruit. Because that comma is a part of the item itself, that counts as internal punctuation. Boom, change that to a semicolon. Our next item, bananas, which are a great source of potassium. That's our next item. Boom. And then in oranges, which are packed with vitamin C, we finished our sentence. So I hope that makes sense. Again, we're, we're separating the items in a list and we're placing the semicolon at the end of each item. And each item has its own punctuation. More often than not, this is going to be a comma that you see. I'll give you one more example here. We've got the student council announce the themes for Spirit Week, Meme Monday, where everyone dances as their favorite internet meme. That's our first item. And here again, you see a comma, although technically we're also using quotation marks, which is internal punctuation, right? TikTok Tuesday, a day to recreate viral dance moves between classes, semicolon, because that was our second item. Whisker Wednesday, celebrating cats with attitude. Throwback Thursday, featuring music hits from the ancient era of the 2010s. And Futuristic Friday, where everyone dresses as if they're attending a concert in 2040. So hopefully that's starting to make sense. Let's put your understanding of this rule to the test by looking at an actual digital SAT question. So using the rule that we just discussed, pause the video and see if you can figure out the answer to this question. You know, obviously A has a semicolon. Are we going to end up using that semicolon or not? All right, I'm going to give you the answer. No, we actually do not want to use A here. Let's talk about why. So if you were thinking parentheses are punctuation marks, right? So that would count as internal punctuation. You would be right. We have the researchers analyzed gaze latency, 
how long it took the goats to look at the experimenter. So that's one big long item, right? And we do have internal punctuation, but there's already a comma here starting off the trend. Once we've started with a comma, we need to commit to using commas all the way through. So we could totally switch this out for a semicolon, and then we could go with A and have semicolons, you know, throughout this whole list, but we're not allowed to mix and match. So it has to be C, even though we would be able to use semicolons in this case because of the parentheses. All right, let's just quickly go through a couple more to solidify this knowledge. Go ahead and pause and try to answer the questions yourself first, then I'll go ahead and explain. So we've got, Charlie spun his guitar while playing and slapped the body of the instrument for a rhythmic effect. He even perfected startling tricks. And then I'm going to finish right there because we know that the sentence basically ends, right? He even perfected startling tricks like all this stuff. So we do have two full sentences, which means a period would work and a semicolon would work. Now, B has a semicolon, but we, we have the word and. Uh, not only do we not want to use a coordinating conjunction when we're using a semicolon, we also don't have the word he, so B is very wrong. All right, this one we've got, lightning bolts can be up to five times hotter than the surface of the sun. And all the answers are witches. Witches far hotter than the melting point of silica. And again, I can tell that the rest of this is just extra information being added to the end of the sentence, so I'm going to go ahead and stop there. In this case, we do not have two full sentences. The relative pronoun which cannot start a sentence. So in this case, we would want to eliminate choice B. And then what do we do if we have a relative pronoun that, you know, adds on and ends the sentence with a dependent clause, we want to use a comma. So our answer should be C. Best practices would be to get rid of these other ones first with, you know, logical rationale, but I was very confident on this one. All right, one more. Take a look. Each year, many species of shorebirds migrate from locations in the southern hemisphere to their breeding grounds in the Arctic which is a journey or a journey of thousands of kilometers that requires frequent stops to fuel up. So in this case, we could go with either a journey or which is a journey, but our only option with which is has a semicolon. And as we just mentioned, you know, which is going to be a relative pronoun. And let's follow best practices like I did not on the last one. Let's eliminate first. What was that rule that I showed you at the very beginning? We can't have a period and a semicolon because they both do the same thing. So we could eliminate both of these because you can't have two right answers. By process of elimination, we have to go with B. And if those example questions did not look familiar, that's because they're not actually from the college board practice exams. They're from our in-house practice exams. And that's not actually Bluebook you're seeing. That's our in-house interface that we designed to mimic the Bluebook interface. So to practice these techniques, go ahead and sign up for a free practice exam using the link in the description.